Hey traders, Marcello, founder of the Day Trading Academy. Today we're going to be answering all of your questions that you have. So we're here in our trading center in Medellin. Uh, thank you guys for all the love. I really appreciate it. Uh, this question is from uh, Osama. I'm sure you're from India or some Middle Eastern country. So we're reaching there as well. I appreciate it. Uh, don't forget to subscribe here on YouTube, guys. And if you have any questions, or ladies, obviously, equal opportunity employer, um, equal opportunity trader, I should say, or traders. Bueno, uh, hashtag ask Marcello, no H2Ls, and I'll be happy to go ahead and pull all your questions to answer any of the questions you guys have about trading or the financial markets or what kind of shoes I like, whatever the case may be. Osama Olmain and Seth, I have been trading with a capital of $5,000 for three years, and I have been making a making an average return of 25%. Is there a way I can get an investor's attention and manage his money in exchange for management fees? Osama, so uh, we at DTA, we're not trading advisors. We, we don't, you know, quote unquote, manage people's money. But there is a way to obviously get someone's attention. Um, there's, I, I, honestly, I would Google it. Uh, I would even talk to your broker, whoever is your broker. They might be able to put you in contact with somebody as well. I think that there are a lot of people that would be interested in those kind of returns, obviously, right? Especially now because most interest rates now, since they've been so low, a lot of investors are looking for much higher returns or much higher interest rates. So uh, where can you go? I honestly wouldn't be able to refer you to any specific location uh, because you know that's, that's not kind of what we do. We're more just of an education company where we teach guys how to trade. So. What I'd recommend is just ask my homeboy Google. You know, go to Google, Google, you know, how you can find people to manage money. Uh, there's also a lot of companies out there, proprietary trading firms that look for traders to fund. So that's something else that you can Google, you know, how to find investors to fund or things like that. And I'm sure, I'm sure that you'll be able to find somebody that way, Osama. So I, I know it's not an exact answer to your question, but um, I think that should be very easy to find online, to be honest with you. Sort of Sharma says, how many trades should we execute in a day? So Rav, so the way that we trade at the Day Trading Academy, we look at what's called tick charts. And tick charts are based on transactions instead of uh, time frames like you guys normally do. Like uh, I'm looking here at the question again to kind of answer it properly. Candlestick charts. So time frames like candlestick charts, you're looking at 60 minute bars or 30 minute bars or 10 minute bars or one minute bars or five minute bars, you know, whatever you guys look at when it comes to time frames, when it comes to minute charts. We don't look at minute charts because you're not able to one, see what the market is actually doing because let's say for example, there's a lot of volume, right? You're gonna see the same eight bars 10 in, in eight hours in a day. So, uh, and I don't know if I'm explaining this properly, but it, let's say we have the highest volume in the history of the exchange of, of the stock market. Something like Brexit or Trump where the, the volume goes crazy. You're still gonna see eight charts, eight, eight, eight bars of 60 minutes. You're still gonna see 16 bars of 30 minutes, 48 bars of 10 minutes. So we use what's called tick charts, which are based on transactions, not on time frames. And what that allows us to do is actually take advantage of the market when it's moving well, try to avoid it when it's not moving well, and obviously see the actual intention or behavior market structure of the actual behavior of the market. So when you ask me how many trades should we execute a day, the most that fit your plan or the most, we got a crazy noise in here, or the most that allows you to continue to be successful. So I would highly recommend that you look at tick charts. Uh, most platforms have them now. I think the last one to, to actually uh, get it was MetaTrader, well, major platforms anyway. So I, I, essentially, 
If the market's moving really well, you might trade a lot. If the market's not moving really well, you might not trade at all. Not trading or putting positions is a position as well. So there might be days where you don't take any trades. And that's an actual position for us as well because obviously you have to make sure that you push the limits when the market's moving well and you kind of avoid the market when the market isn't moving well. So I can't tell you if it should be one or two or five or 50. For us, it really depends on how the market is moving and that's really the, the answer I can give you. So sorry if it's not a... Uh, an exact question for you. Arusama Omen says, Is it a bad idea to trade using a 13 inch razor blade still attached to an ultra wide monitor? Uh, I would say that 13 is too small of a screen, but if you have a big enough screen, that it should be fine. I prefer minimum, my recommendation is minimum 15 inches some kind of music outside. Minimum 15 inches for a computer and obviously if you have a big screen you can connect that to, that's more than okay my man. Uh, let's see what else we got here from Mr. Payne. Hello from Canada. Mr. Payne says, what is your take on Warren Buffett's Berkshire Hathaway investments into Canadian Supreme Lender Home Capital Group Inc. last month and the Bank of Canada recently increasing there and managed his money in exchange interest rate after seven years? So let me answer the interest rate question first. We have been in a global environment where the interest rates have been the lowest for the longest period of time in the history of the world. We have never had another period in time where the interest rates one have been so low and two have been so low for so long. So this isn't going to end well in my opinion Mr. Payne because by putting the interest rate so low, it creates a bubble in different environments. That's why the market, for example, keeps, keeps hitting record high after record high after record high after record high, and that's not normal. We've had overextensions of the market where we haven't seen retracements of more than 1% on record. We've had um, the most consecutive days of record max returns or a record uh, high in history, all of these records about all of these quote unquote good things. And unfortunately, the reason why that's happening is because we've created this, this fictitious bubble and that's been caused by the low interest rates. Now, in my personal opinion, there, you know, if you can look this up if you want on Google, there was more millionaires created in the history of the world when we had the Great Depression. So there was more millionaires created in the, not just the history, history of the world, right? Going back to Samaria, since recorded times in the Great Depression. So if things get really bad or we do have another depression, I believe that there's a way to capitalize on it. Obviously, if you know how to invest or you know how to trade, obviously for me, that would be the best way, right? So that's the first thing. So increasing the interest rates, uh, Mr. Payne, is going to finally allow the bubble to stop popping or pop the actual bubble that we're in. And to some that might be a bad thing. For the governments that's a bad thing because obviously they want to stay in control and they want everything to be awesome all the time. But for the people it's not a good thing because they should have let what was supposed to happen during the 2008 crisis like Iceland did and, and excuse my French when I say this because I don't want to be vulgar but let the shit out of the system and then the system will recover on its own. The reason obviously why we had the 2008 crisis is because the financial system and banks were doing things they weren't supposed to and instead of taking them to jail and letting those bank companies go bankrupt or splitting the big banks so they're not too big to fail they just let it happen and just kind of gave people a slap on the wrist. So that's what's going to happen with the interest rates once they start raising them. And in terms of Berkshire Hathaway investment into Canadian subprime lender home capital group, I a subprime a subprime lender basically means for those of you guys that don't know that you're investing in someone that's lower grade which basically means instead of investing to the guy that makes $100,000 a year who has perfect credit and always pays his bills on time, we're paying the guy or giving money, loaning money to the person that doesn't have a job, can't find a job, and has $100,000 in debt. So that's the difference of what we're talking about in terms of subprime. Subprime means horrible credit, people who you shouldn't give money to. So. The only advantage to this, obviously, Mr. Payne, is that 
you the interest rates that are paid to subprime lenders or subprime people who are subprime are very high. You know, we're talking about 30% interest rates to, to, to do a car loan, those kind of interest rates. They're, they're sky high. So depending on the format of the investment, I don't necessarily see a problem with it if he's able to get his return on his money. So obviously Warren Buffett's a smart guy. He knows about the crisis. That's why he's investing in companies like railroad companies that own railroads, right? Things that are physical because if things hit the fan, then physical things are what's gonna increase in value. He also has obviously a hundred billion dollars in cash. It was reported the other day. He always likes to keep about 20 billion cash on hand to look for good investments. And so if he's able to invest in the subcrime group and he's able to return his investment quickly because of the high interest rates, then it, everything is fine. So that's, that's what I think about that, Mr. Payne. So if you guys have any other questions, don't forget to leave them with hashtag Ask Marcello. I'll be happy to go ahead and pull those for you. And don't forget to subscribe. Thank you for